What is going on? This is Grant David with Static Multimedia, and I am hanging out with Maddie Lewis today, who, as I am sure that you already know, is the lead singer and guitarist of the band Zebrahead. They got a new album coming out in two weeks, and Maddie has been cool enough to come by and tell us about that. So, Maddie, man, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic, actually. Thanks for asking. That is good to hear. That's what I like to hear, man. Um, so, can we talk a little bit about Get Nice, your newest album, which hit stores September 27th? Um, you know, who was behind the production? Where was it recorded? What can we expect? You know, that type of thing. Yeah, uh, well, we recorded it at our own studio in uh, Fullerton, California. And uh, we used uh, the same producer that we did our last record, uh, our cover record, Panic, which is uh, our good friend, a good buddy, Jason Freeze, who uh, he plays keyboards in Green Day, and he's you know played with Goo Goo, Goo Dolls and produced uh, one of Jewel's Lullaby albums. And yeah. But, uh, he's a good friend of ours, and we just did it, and he was he was a spy us and by the studio, so it all worked out. <laughs> nice. But uh, it's a. Uh, I like the record. It's my favorite Superhead record to date, and uh, I think it's it's a little bit poppy. Yeah. Uh, poppier than the other records. The last, well, especially the last two. But um, uh, we were just really um, proud of this record, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, that's awesome, man. And um, what <laughs> what was up with the uh, album artwork? I thought that was a pretty interesting choice to go with. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know. That old Dick and Jane uh, books from the fifties, yeah, you know, kind of, kind of wholesome and, and whatnot. We we thought we use that for the cover, and then like as you open and flip through the the book, but you know, kids were doing you know really fucked up things, and, you know, <laughs> it gets progressively worse. They have tattoos and drinking and whatnot, you know, the things that I guess aren't so wholesome anymore. And yeah. we had a lot more pictures in the in the artwork uh, in the booklet, but they were turned down. By <laughs> What there? It's uh, too too explicit. What's that? Were they too explicit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't. Yeah. They they frown upon you know drugs and prostitution. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's understandable. Um. At, oh, why not? And there's the uh, there's a limited edition uh, cover art that's 3D, correct? Yes, yes. Is there only so many of those out in circulation, or do fans just have to pay a little more to get that? No, there's only, uh, I don't know exactly what the number is, but it, it's only primarily here in the States, and there's only uh, a certain, uh, you know, number of them, so, okay. you know, I, I, guess, I guess there's more than five, <laughs> yeah. than a million, how about that? Okay, that, that, okay. <laughs> and um, do those albums come with uh, the glasses, is that how that works? I think so. Well, I, I don't even know if you need the glasses. Yeah, really? I'm not sure. I'm not, I, honestly, I don't, I, I'm not sure if you do need the glasses, but if they, I, I'm sure they would come with the glasses if you need them, but I don't think they do. I think they're just, like, pretty 3D on the road. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so, um, and you already have two music videos for two off the, for two of the tracks off the Get Nice album. Um, one for the song called Get Nice, and then one for Ricky Bobby. What was the experience like shooting these videos, and what were some of the things that you uh, really liked and enjoyed about them? Well, I tell you what, uh, we just shot another video last week oh, nice. uh, for the song "She Don't Wanna Rock," and uh, I think for me, I don't like acting or whatnot. I don't like pretending on camera. You know, be lip sync a lot on the camera for videos. Um, but what I do like is that uh, there's a couple porn stars, yeah, and uh, the your bikinis and uh, the music's pretty loud and I don't know the end, the end result's pretty cool to see your long days of uh, you know hanging out and hurry up and wait and whatever and then you, you see the final product and hey that's pretty cool I yeah, like it for so sure. I think that's the, the best part for me nice nice um, and what, what, when is that video going to be released do you think um, it should be released here uh, within the next couple of weeks nice Nice. I think they, they finished the uh, the color correction and all the editing already. They finished with that, so it's just, just a matter of whenever the label says go. Yeah. Now, in context to the Ricky Bobby video, who was the mastermind that put those gorgeous women in the presidential masks? I mean, <laughs> it, it was such a weird experience watching that video because it was like Bill Clinton was turning me on. 
And it was such a very strange and awkward feeling, and just a problem that I never thought I would have to encounter. Yeah, I, I showed up. I showed up at our, our it was shot at our warehouse studio, and uh, I showed up, and yeah, there's gonna be chicks. Yeah, that's great. Oh, <laughs> what are these masks for? <laughs> and uh, it kind of freaked me out too. But I think, you know, I think uh, we watched Point Break. Uh, Point Point Break. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, we're inspired by that, and, it, and they actually they mean nothing. There's no. There's no political meaning, there's no any kind of meaning, it's just, hey, let's throw something weird in there. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, it kind of it it sucks because the, I thought that the, you know, the chicks were, were kind of hot, so it really did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then who, who was in the pig mask? Uh, that's, what, that's one of our buddies, he, he's not in a band, he uh, usually works with um, the producer. Yeah. Um, He's like a stagehand guy. Nice, nice. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And then um, I was checking out your website, and I saw that loudclothing.com was selling official zebra head shoes. Yeah. Um, how did how did that deal come to be? I mean, did they approach you, or did you approach them? Well, I, I think what it was was um, a matter of, hey, we're making these shoes. Um, do you like them? Yeah, <laughs> dude, they they looked it was, awesome. It was it. Yeah, it was really it was really quick and painless. They they approached us, and uh, uh, honestly, I have no idea who owns the shoes now, and if if any of us bought them, I could. I don't have a pair. I'd like a pair. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was pretty quick and quick and painless. So you, they don't they they don't send you like a free pair or anything? You would think so, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got shit. Yeah, <laughs> that sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I gotta buy my own shit. Uh, yeah, that's not cool. I mean, especially when you have your own brand and everything. Um, well. All right, you guys, you guys tend to cross genres a lot in your music. Do you ever find this to be problematic, or do you think that it gives you a larger array of sounds to experiment with? Uh, that's a good question. I think, um, on the scene with the five of us, we just play music that, that we like. And if it so happens to cross over and, and some other like metal crowds, I, I think it really helps. I, I that's my answer. I think it really helps because like if we're playing a, a, a say a festival yeah. and you got you know thousands of the kids and they each like different things and uh, you, you know the metal kids are happy and the poppy kids are happy and yeah. we're happy and we're playing the music we like and um, yeah I, I think it I think it helps. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, hey, just so you know, I'm just so you know, I'm driving right now. But yeah. I have a headset on, and I'm going through a tunnel right now. And if it, if you lose, if I lose you, I will call you right back. But I don't think it will. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, where, where are you driving to? Well, I live in Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, I have an appointment. Um, my wife and I bought a, a house. Nice. And, uh, I have an appointment with the guy who's going to make our pool later on. Oh, so nice, nice. That's where I'm headed. Awesome. Um, you, uh, so you live in Vegas, do you ever gamble? Yeah, that's the problem. I, I only gamble when family and friends are in town, Yeah. but they seem to come in town a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm friends with a lot of guys in bands, and bands always travel up here, and then my family always, like, they always want to come out here, and, uh, because it's like a, a nice destination place, and yeah. I just can't help, I just can't help it. I, I have an addictive personality. <laughs> what, what, uh, what, what's your game? Roulette. Roulette, yeah. Are oh, you? Yeah. Are you? Are you? Are you uh, it sucks you right in because you win. You win once or twice in your house. Yeah, for sure. Are you up or down in the long run? Oh, you never. You never want to know that because <laughs> it's, only, you know, it's only for that day. You can't keep track. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you should tell that to my grandmother. <laughs> That's sad. Uh, <laughs> um. Okay. So. Moving on up, how is how is Get Nice different from your past albums? Are you guys going new places creatively, and I mean, or are, are diehard fans of Zebrahead gonna you know like what they hear? You think? Well, you know, hopefully, they, hopefully the, the diehard kids will like what they hear. Uh, it's not too crazy, you know, different what well, you know with who we are. Um, we just honestly, we we tried to make the song. Uh, a not suck yeah. and B just try to write songs that we really enjoyed and uh, for this record especially especially for me it was um, tough to 
cut some songs for the record. Because yeah. I, I like, you, you like, know, yeah. I see 99% of them, which is, you know, it's kind of rare for, uh, well, for this for us. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, uh, if you had to pick one of the tracks off the new album to be your favorite, which one do you think that would be? Uh, I like She Don't Wanna Rock. I, I think that's a fun song, and it's, it's one of my favorites. Nice, nice. Okay, um, so you you came in the band as a replacement member for Justin, correct? Yep. And how how did that go down? Like, I mean, in other words, like, how did you connect with the rest of the band in the first place? And what was that transition like coming into a band that was already pretty well established? Yeah, and you know what? It, it, it's kind of awkward. I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but I was in another band, and uh, we we kind of uh, we had the same management. And I, I met the guys one time, just like in passing, once at a show or whatever. Yeah. And um, my band broke up, and then I was going to do a solo thing uh, for for some for some labels. And uh, uh, our manager Todd, <laughs> excuse me, our manager Todd said, "Well, since we don't have uh, the bassist and, and uh, drummer right now, why doesn't uh, Ed and Ben Zebrahead just play in the studio part?" And, um, you know, we'll go from there. And ironically, at the same time, that's when uh, they, you know, Justin left and they kicked him out or, or whatever. Yeah. And um, they had my demos already because they were learning them to go in the studio. And they thought, hey, why don't you just come down and try out, you know, for Zebrahead? And uh, I said, sure, okay, why not? And showed up with my stuff. And I had to get all the songs because... I didn't have a CD. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have any CD. But that's. that's I, I always tell them that's like my joke to them. I, I didn't even refer to you guys. <laughs> sure. I, cause I, I lived in Nebraska and they played. Uh, they had a. Um, I think. Um, a Get Back was was played on the radio there a couple of times. Yeah. But um. Yeah. I just I showed up and and rehearsed and uh, I guess they had a lot of auditions and. Uh, just stuck. We uh, kind of like meshed right away. It was really cool. That's awesome. And, that was like six and a half, almost, yeah, six and a half, maybe seven, almost seven years now, I think. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So what is the band's current relationship with Justin? I mean, is there bad blood there? I mean, do you guys still talk? Uh, what's the situation? You know, I don't I don't think any of the guys have, have, have talked to them. I, I think uh, there might be a couple texts here and there. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think they left on a sour note. Oh, really? And, uh... Yeah, and I, you know, to be honest, I don't, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know. I don't really ask too yeah. much about it. It's kind of like the old uh, girlfriend kind of situation. Mm, and uh, I, I just don't think they, uh, I just don't think they care anymore. Yeah. You know, they're, he's, he's moved on, we've moved on, and uh, we're just, uh, I think we're a completely different. Well, obviously we're a completely different band, but I think uh, collectively we're just a completely different band now. Yeah. And, and new mindset. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And okay, well that, that's cool. I mean, you guys are doing your own your own separate things, you know, whatever. That's that's cool. Um, so are you guys you're you're cur currently touring right now, aren't you? Uh, we just finished uh, a festival season it was in August, and we were supposed to go to Australia during this time right now, but uh, uh, Van Halen uh, dropped off the uh, it was the uh, uh, what festival was it? Soundwave Festival in Australia, and they, and they dropped off of that, so they can't Soundwave. So we're going back in February, but we're not going on tour again until November. And you're doing the the Get Nice album in November, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's gonna be our headline tour. Do you know? Uh, do you know who who you're gonna be playing with at all? Uh, not yet. We're still working on opening bands, and we're gonna go to Europe and the UK first. And we'll be in the States in uh, probably 2012. Yeah. Are you guys going to uh, Japan at all? Because I know you guys are really big in Japan. Yeah, we're going back and uh, we're doing our headline tour in January. Yeah. It is fantastic. We, we, we went there in August as well because we played a festival, Summer Sonic. And um, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, yeah what's, it, what, what, it what's it like playing in Japan? Like, that must be insane, right? Yeah, Japan is pretty amazing because in between songs and in between bands, they're, they're deathly quiet. Yeah. They're very, they're very respectful and they, they want to hear what you have to say. 
But as soon as you start playing, they just go crazy. Yeah, it's for sure. It's not like any other crowd I've, I've ever played in front of. And uh, it's just a, it's pretty amazing. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say about it because it's so amazing. It's had, had you ever have you ever had you ever been to Japan before touring? No. 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 Uh, okay. Cool, no. cool. And uh, it was it was a pretty eye opening experience right away. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think I think the first show um, in Japan that I played was uh, Punk Spring, which is a smaller festival, but it was still like fifteen thousand. And then in, like summer time it was like fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So it, it's pretty wild over there. I bet, I bet. Um, okay, so, I mean, uh, Zebra, Zebrahead's music has been used in uh, many different instances of pop culture. I mean, you guys got a song in the movie Little Nicky, Dude, Where's My Car? It's been used in video games like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Smash Brothers. Um, why, why do you think that it is that so many different medium have, mediums have embraced your band's music? Do you think that it is because you guys cross so many different genres? Yeah, I think that I think that's definitely it because it, it, it does. It, like I said before, it's got the metal in it, it's got you know the poppiness in it, and uh, it just it just kind of works for pretty much anything you want it to. Next time, I'm hoping to be in some uh, porno movies, hopefully. Oh, really? Like, uh, <laughs> to tell us a little bit about that, man. Come on, elaborate. <laughs> oh, you know what? Like Eddie Van Halen, I think in the late '80s, he did he did some scores for some. Uh, some porn. I thought that was such a great idea. Yeah. You know how awesome would that be? Yeah. <laughs> you, you forgot about um, you forgot about the blockbuster hit Ace Ventura Three that we were in. Ah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that one. <laughs> uh, or the Cutting Edge Four. I don't know if you remember that one. I didn't even know that existed. No. <laughs> I, I didn't either. <laughs> so, so are you a are you a big uh, pornography fan? Do you watch porno from every now and then? Uh, which one, porn? Yeah, do you watch porn every now and then? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's all we do on the road. Like on our computers, we yeah. we look up the most insane stuff. And uh, I tell you what, the, the best ones that we found were peanutbuttersparks.com and cakefarter.com. And those those they add. The sexual element and they add the comedic element oh. because they're farting in cakes and farting <laughs> over peanut butter. That's uh, yeah. I guess I'll, I'll have to uh, check that out. <laughs> you, 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 won't, you won't stop laughing. It's hilarious. <laughs> so the, you've seen the fucking that two girls one cup, right? Oh yeah, just very disgusting. Very yeah, disgusting. Yeah, traumatizing. In fact. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, who's who is your uh, favorite porn star? Do you have one? Yeah, it's definitely Kenzie Kinner because she has been in the last, I think, four or five of our videos. Oh, nice. So you guys have a personal relationship. Yeah, she's great. She's, um, she's a fantastic person, actually. She does art. She also acts in our videos, and she does some makeup in our videos. Very nice, very nice. Is there any uh, is there any chance that you're going to appear in a porno? I hope not, no. Maybe one, uh, be maybe one everyone, between... For everyone's sake. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think one between you and your wife is going to leak out? No, I hope not. I mean, if it does, if it does, I'll make sure that we re-edit it and master it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure all the masturbators would appreciate that. <laughs> yes, they would. Cause you know what? You don't want a too amateur porn. You gotta do it. You gotta do it right. Yeah, and just, just, if, just do me a favor. Make like, you know, keep, keep the shots of your face to a minimal. Okay? That's uh, yeah. you, you never want to see too much of the guy's face. No, no, I, I, even the ones that, like, if, yeah, if they wear a mask or anything, just, just pan down, that's, that's all we care about. Just, yeah, it just, it just kills it. All right. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to let you go, Maddie. Um, I appreciate very much you taking time out of your busy day to talk to us. That's really cool of you, man. I really appreciate that. No, no sweat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Not a problem. And what we'll do is we'll put the music videos under this interview as long as a link where the fans can, um, you know, order a copy of your album when it comes out. That's great. And um, uh, I think our new uh, uh, video, She Don't Want to Rock, should be out, like I said, within the next week or, or week and a half. Okay, so, cool. So, yeah, we'll definitely put that one up, too. We'll look for that one as well. Okay, cool, cool. All right, well, good luck with your uh, pool guy meeting. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, you have a good day, Maddie. All right, take care. You too. Bye. Bye.